Welcome to Zentangle Project Pack number 16 and the 12 Days of Zentangle. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And in this project pack, we're going to get dimensional. Ooh. <laughs> and we're going to uh, use all of the uh, items in the project pack kit, which are available from our website. But if you don't have them, you can uh, feel free to, to play along and uh, enjoy this wonderful time. Uh, in this project pack, we're going to, or in this video, we're going to introduce a, uh, a new fragment and reticula. Oh, so the reticula is kind of reticulous. It, uh, it's not like, like any other reticula that we have that is, you know, very specific repeating lines and different things. These are repeating blobs or amoebas. Repeating shapes, or, yeah. Uh, shapes that never, they're never the same. Um, and, and they just can't be. So you just kind of wiggle around and make a blob. This is very technical. I'm, yes, I'm yes. trying to be very technical. This one here is about the size of my thumb. You can see it, just to give you an idea. And what we're going to do is we're going to aura uh, a little ways around and then make another blob that goes from one to the other so that we have uh, a, a distance between the blobs that's uh, it's pretty even, like, like most of the reticulars. So think of it as like perhaps mortar between these uh, uh, odd shape or irregular shape. Uh, actually, if you were to imagine looking down on a forest canopy, you might imagine these as the tops of trees fitting next to each other. It sort of goes together like Tripoli. I mean, we do this whole same thing with Tripoli in that you, you uh, carefully aura one side and then draw the other two sides, right. really nilly. Right, uh, so focusing on the aura and then building the rest of the shape. Right, and it goes together so easily. Uh, I, I love this new concept, and, and, and we might come up with uh, different ways to do this um, as well. You know, it could be six-sided shapes right, or, right. or whatever, but it would go together the same way. And you'll see that Maria is, uh, you'll, you perhaps are noticing that background, that is the, uh, Maria's blotter on her desk. My working area, yeah. And every time she drops a, a blob of, of something, she will tangle around it. Oh, that's and right. You can see all the blobs of color. Right? And I usually it, do it when I'm on the phone. <laughs> right. And it's it's like a, uh, like what would you call it, like a velvet or a felt? Uh, like a, a, a suede mat mm. that you can get in any um, art supply, not uh, a frame, sto frame, frame store. Stores. It's a suede mat. And I love drawing on it, and it's a it's the perfect uh, cushion for drawing for me. So you can see I, I've got these blobs uh, going around, and I'm sort of creating a circular, uh, almost a, 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 like a zinnia look, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it doesn't have to be exactly circular. We we can work without it being circular, so don't worry about that. We're going to fill this with a new. Uh, um, uh, fragment called Mirth, M-R-T-H, and it was so spectacular. We thought it it uh, deserved a name for itself. I, we don't usually name fragments, but this one was really cool. So it starts with a smiley face right there in the middle, and you start shooting above with these, um, uh, like, what do you call them? Like, uh, well, like these little, little... Um Hmm. Little frozen fireworks going yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah. So you have a line that, that uh, auras, and then it, it gets fatter at the end. Uh, we've used this te technique in, um, in other tangles, but this one here uh, just kind of spoke to me. And you, you'll notice I love how you vary the pressure on your, your pen stroke sometimes to even when it just lifts up off the paper there. That's because lines should have personal personalities, mm. just like anything else you do. And to me, the more personality a line has, the more interesting it is. So this uh, right here, we're going to continue that smiley face so that it, it like uh, makes you th think that there's a hole there that these mm. lines are, are going inside of. Now we're going to turn it 90 degrees. Now watch this. This is an important part because I think most people think they're going to just continue the uh, direction, but we're going to go 90 degrees and 
go to the edge of the Pangea till you get to the left. And you can see when I put these lines down that every once in a while I skip a beat and there's a little uh, white space there. And that's, that's one of the um, characteristics I use a lot. It's sort of like woodcut-esque, yeah, right? Yeah, or like an etching. So that's interesting, right? That's interesting and unexpected. So again, we're going to go up straight. And if you're watching this video for the, the first one in the series, there is an introductory video where we uh, talk a lot about the materials in the, in the project pack. And uh, we encourage you to, to check that out because there's a bunch of extra little uh, gizmos that we're going to use, particularly in this, right, this video. Yeah. It so, also reminds me of, of Diva Dance, you know, that, that thin and thick yeah, line. Yeah, a little bit like Diva. So, okay, it's already starting to look pretty interesting. Now we're going to continue around that smiley face. That smiley face now is your launching pad. And you're going to go all the way around and not worrying about where you're going to end up. Because I, w I want you to end up in this weird place that isn't even. I like that whole idea. And unexpected that this tangle tells you what to do. You can't expect to know what is going to happen. It's, and I love the surprises that it gives. It gives something different each time you get around to the end. So you have this almost like uh, shelf-like effect where it's coming out. And you know that it's not going to come out even. You know that, that, which is really cool. And the whole beauty of, or one of the beauties of Aura is the previous line helps you do the the subsequent line and you don't need to plan multiple lines ahead because you know when you get to that line you'll have the reference point that's already there but you can see how she's you know echoing that little bend being right there with the bends really uh speak to me on this they tell me what to do they they whisper in my ear i love that mm. Um, when you have a tangle that just tells you what to do, whatever line you put down, that next line is already uh, in the making. And she's turning the tile each time on each one of those lines. Relaxing so, your hand. Yep. So you, you, you can see here there's going to be an unexpected finish. Almost like a dancer doing something so out of character that you have to applaud so hard. <laughs> And it's really creating that lovely over and under, right? right. Just shading that. And the gap there, you know, the whole idea of maintaining that uh, evenness of, of aura-ing is just another part of the pattern. And you can see I add love. Every once in a while I'm just looking at things and correcting a line a little bit, uh, um, working with the spacing. Now... On the edges of Pangea, there are times when you can do some really fun things. And what I wanted, these little pistols, right, <laughs> like a pistol and a flower, right, right. to come out. And it's sort of suggested in that middle one, but it's not as suggested as, as these. Look at the these energy These are actually in this. doing it, yeah. So now we go back. We've, we uh, finish that smiley face. And they're, they're still kind of coming out that middle. So again, uh, 90 degrees, and we're going to have those straight lines coming out, down and up. And always flaring the ends. And it makes sense because the, you know, the outer part is, is a larger diameter. And, Look yeah, that. And you don't have to flare each one. So we're doing another one that's kind of uh, exploding out the edges. I love it when these, these things just go viral and right. not know where they're escaping or, yeah. or showing their their character and their exuberance well just letting them grow a, a, according to you know what their inspiration is and, and being sensitive to the direction and just working with the tile let it let it get speak to you so i'm anxious to see what you guys do with this right? because it it is so expressive look at this one now this one's gonna you have to go 
along the edges. Look what's going to do. Un- right. Totally unexpected. It's not going to look anything like the other ones. Look at that. It's very art deco, don't you think? Yes. And there's, there's all kinds of surprises we can add here. Um, so you can see the, the thick and thin... Oh, my God, here's a zinger coming. I didn't know that it was sprouting season, but evidently. So now we know how, what the flowering is when it comes out. Yeah. And didn't know zinger could be the end of a pistol, you know. Right. Going in and uh, finishing that smiley face. Look how fun. Right. It's alive. So there's this little, there's this playfulness and, and responsiveness and working with how, Yours is going to look, and it's going to look different than this. It's going to look different than mine and everybody else's, and that's part of the magic here and the fun. So we invite you to put these up on the, on the app and to share them, and because when you see what other people do, you'll say, oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to try that. We learn from the app. I learn so much from, yes. from the app. There's some amazing artists that are so willing to share their ideas and, and creativity. So Look you, at that. Oh, goodness. And Maria didn't go all the way to the edge because then it leaves those little uh, those little growths and spurts and pistols and... and Zingers to uh, Zingers, to yeah. appear. So I'm going to use this uh, silver uh, jelly roll mm-hmm. and uh, going to give it a, a bit of a border. And again, notice the, you know, sort of like emphasizing the deco edge with the uh, pressure and the wave. Sort of a line on, on caffeine, you know, right <laughs> after you've had a couple of cups of coffee. And I, I welcome that because it, it, it makes me do things in a different way. So add some uh, perfs. Perfs. Yeah. And you can see already perfs that the, the, uh, the sizes, yeah, perfs are tippled depending on how it's used. And um, you'll see Maria's doing that orb in two strokes. So using the pen. Sometimes. It, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can play with that. Look at what I just did. Do you see yeah. it? Yeah. Little tiny one to fit a those little in. Little tiny one where, where there's... Uh, not enough room or, or these zingers get in the way. They kind of um, tell you how to do your, your border. I love that. Oh, yeah. There's always a way. I like the reflection of the, uh, the silver, too. Yeah, That's yeah. nice. That is a nice background. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm always looking to do more. Right. So in where those two circles come together you you put in a little tiny bead of some sort it's it's going to sort of seem like it's holding everything together and i love how maria pauses and looks at it and then gets okay what does the tile want and then take it from there so with our handy dandy uh, graphite pencil we're going to add some shades of gray here and the first one is right to the left and right of those pistols to kind of uh Give, give them, an, uh, bring them to the forefront. Right, so you really see them lifting off the background. Right, right. And, you know, turning the tile so you can really uh, relax your hand. So you can see where there are op- opportunities to put shading because I am then going to go in with the white chalk and add the highlights on the top so the, the, the white will be sort of above and the, um, the uh, shading will be in those uh, curves that go in. See that first one right there? Look at that. Just that curve. The tortillon makes such a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Ah, that's so cool. Molly introduced me to the tortillon. I used to just use my finger, and I thought, no, it's okay, it's okay, until I used it, and it was like this magic wand. You could direct things so explicitly. And you're just inviting the graphite into the paper so it can just, it holds it better, and it's such soft edges. Look at that. Oh, that's that one that went crazy up there. Right. 
And you can always go back and add more graphite as well to increase the contrast. It's beautiful. Oh, look at that. You know, and turning it this way and that and seeing, okay, I want to touch it up a little bit more here or there. But already this is fun. So um, with the tortillon, I'm, I'm not even adding graphite. I'm just using my tortillon to add a little bit of a, a gray uh, Tone? detail, uh, like, like gray pearls, like mm. what do you call those, freshwater? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, freshwater yeah. pearls. Yeah. Just, and, 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 and you don't want them all exactly the same. You want it to have some character. And if your tortillon is starting to, you know, run out of graphite, you can always just reach over into the, you know, into the, you know, the Pangea, one of the. Yeah. Right, See what yeah, I'm doing? I'm right putting, there. getting some more pencil. Picking up a bit more. There. Yeah. Nice. And it's it's a subtle thing. You might not even notice it at first. Beautiful. Oh, this is a pretty piece. I think you guys are going to love this tangle. So with this magic white chalk pencil from uh, Generals, we add all this this highlight, this this light that comes um, from out of nowhere. I mean, yes. wow. Well, and it you putting it near the dark, near the charcoal. It, I, I mean, near the uh, graphite. It just really increases that contrast, right? Even just look at that, just the swipe like that. Yeah. Very simple. And it is a great example of, of even once you have all of your ink down, how much you can direct the appearance of the result with the graphite and the white charcoal. So when you're um, uh, you just sharpening the white, you want that uh, special big, bigger right. uh, sharpener for the it, white chalk. It, it's a lower angle. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted uh, more uh, of a point here because I want to just uh, cover a lot of area in the back. Almost, you know, playing playing games with, is this a white tile? Is this a tan mm. tile? And, and making you question things. Uh, it, it also just uh, sets off both... The, the border and the Pangea. Look at that. Okay, so now this is the thing I'm going to use just ever so lightly. And you know. Maria's got the marking on it because, you know, as long as she can, it'll keep the, the white tortillon separate from the pencil tortillon. Right. If you don't mark it, it, it eventually becomes a black, a right. black one. Yeah. Oh, they all become black ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not this. I've had this one for a long time. Really? So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look at that difference. Look at that. And sometimes you don't even need the tortillon with the white. Right. It can Just, it can function yeah. as its own. Look at that little line. Oh, right? Pretty. It's soft. You know, e even though that it's it's intense black, there's a softness to mm -hmm. it. Uh, very cool. Love this. Okay, so we'll put our uh, chop there. Maria keeps uh, changing it oh, up yeah, now and then. Ever so slightly. It's almost you could you could time time yeah. the tiles <laughs> by which uh, what your chop looks like. So now we're just we're just beginning. I'm just signing this for fun. <laughs> this is going to be, you'll see, it's like the secret signature. That, that'll make sense in a moment. Okay, so our next uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to stick one of these Zendalas to the other. That's why I was laughing about my uh, my signature, because it's never going to be seen again. We're going to put some of this uh, Mod, Podge. Mod Podge on here and uh, spread it around with this sponge brush. And... Um, you and know, you want, you don't want it too thick, uh, but you just want it to go s slightly to the edges. I'm going to I'm going to pick it up. I hope here and and not get it all over my blotter. But yeah, you might want to put a piece of paper yeah. on your you can see, nice yeah. blotter. <laughs> and 
when you put these together, they, they end up sticking really quickly. Yeah. So, uh, position so you check it, gently it and you first. can, you can move it around a little bit, uh, and then just, uh, seal this good. This, this is going to, uh, have a purpose to it. Yeah. So we're making it sort of like a Zentangle plywood here. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And if you have like a, a book or something, I think we just put it, folded it up in a piece of paper and... Uh, and put it inside a book. Yeah. So there something, it goes. Something that'll hold it pretty uh, tight you know, like a hardcover book, and then put something on top of it. After it's done, it's going to be pretty uh, pretty, pretty stiff. Yeah, it, it won't bend so easy. So now we get some thread yep. and needle. And I'm going to have, like, at least uh, have that piece of string at least, like, 24 inches, so you have, like, 12 inches to play with. Put a knot in it, and you're in... Everybody does their knots a little differently. And it doesn't matter what the knot looks like. We're going to... Uh, it'll disappear. It'll disappear. It's like a string disappears. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we want to uh, put a hole uh, about a quarter of an inch in on opposite sides. So you can see... You're right. going to go in... I, and I put the uh, the hole there so you could see it. And you did that with the needle, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to go in that way and then go in the opposite way over here. And you want this, the distance between, on this thread here, to be about two inches. Right. So we're making this lovely little uh, rounded. Look, which shape is this? Right? Like a, it's a great a, shape. A curvature of some sort, and that yeah. that uh, has this is uh, you'll so, want to. Uh, I think I measured it off. You can yeah. see about two inches. And this is all going to make sense. So just you 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 know you're probably just going to watch the video and you then play it back. You can see me adjusting it. It's about two inches. Yeah. Now I'm going to tie knots on both sides to just sort of hold it in place. Hold the, get the strings together. Maria has been, Maria's mom was a seamstress, yeah, Maria yeah. was a seamstress, so yeah. it, it's, uh, it's coming into Zentangle and, art And if, here. if this is a difficult part for you, there might be a friend or, or, or a mom around <laughs> who can uh, do this. But it's a great skill, and it's, it's, I really love the interaction of the string because it, the string... And pencil plays such a you role. You can see me knotting this to keep to, to get the string together. And you can just she's just pulling the the needle through the string clump there. I'll do it a bunch of times, and it'll just hold itself in. So you have this like uh, binding across the. Uh, the tile, and you can now see why we doubled up the tile, so it has this nice spring to it, and it'll hold its it'll hold its shape. You think you got enough knot there? <laughs> uh, I think I do. There we go. I just don't want it to come apart. Right. Okay. So it's Cut kind. Of, it's not even even, right? Right. <laughs> it's and almost even. It's we didn't measure it that much, enough. but it's even enough. Okay. So here comes the magic. Right. So <laughs> we we did this so long. I, I did this uh, prototype, what, two years ago right. or something We've like that? We've been hanging on We've to this. We've been hanging on to this, wondering where we're going to use this. So this blue tack is something I use a lot, and it's used in, um, like, uh, in the back of hanging up uh, paintings, paintings or, or, or photos stuff, yeah. or stuff. Um, it sticks to things without uh, damaging them. Yeah, and we have it's blue like tack silly, it's all like over the, the house. The house, the house is put together by blue tack. So these are two nickels, five cent pieces, and they're two centimeters. They're about two centimeters. If you're from England or Europe and you need something, you find a coin that's about two centimeters, in, and it'll be the right weight. And we're going to press right it in, the in middle. there. It's slightly off center, slightly. <laughs> if 
very high tech here. So blue tech is a magic I've thing. I've never seen anybody do this. I, I think <laughs> I invented this. But if somebody did. else can come up and say, yeah, well, I've seen one of those before. But I haven't. And we just call it a flipper. But I right. mean, there, should, there could be a better word than that. Okay, so just squeeze it together, and it's quite happy, and and it actually starts to have okay. a bit of personality <laughs> here. Whoops! <The, laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. Right. <laughs> so we actually have a bunch of these, yeah. and we've been on the playing dining room around table, with them. Right? So let's. So that just hangs in there, sort of in the middle, and make sure uh, it's nice and squeezed together. So let's take it over to the dining room table and. Okay. Uh, Take it for a ride. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay. Oh, my God. It <laughs> flips. And it writes itself pretty much every time. Right. <laughs> we, we have played. Every time we go by the table, we have these things flipping all over the place. They're the funniest things. Uh, so, so thank you for literally playing with us. <laughs> and and, and uh, when, it, when it lands on its back, it, it flips over. <laughs> so... See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs>